Hi all, let's have a look at round four of Leela Chess. This is the 10161 by the way, ID, so it was on the test network with the 10 prefix. So this opponent in round four is Chess22K, I believe running on a 43 core machine. E4, Leela plays the Sicilian defense, Knight F3, D6. This is the end of the book actually given to both engines. So TCEC is testing um, positions but giving the engines both white and black in the same position, so it's it's fair, it's balanced. This is the end of the book here. Now chess 22k plays the more positional bishop b5 check instead of d4, which uh, seems maybe a little bit surprising. Uh, knight d7 was played here. In chess based live book actually, bishop d7 and knight c6 seem to be a little bit more popular, both of these. For example here, uh, this continuation, with c3 is thought to give white a small edge, white playing for a slow d4, and knight c6 as well, the same kind of um, idea, just playing for c3. It seems a lot of players do like that, to play it like a Aurelia Pez or something. So knight d7 though was played here, c4, setting up a kind of Moroxy bind. Uh, d4 is also, just, just playing d4 here is, uh, an interesting position. White could give up the blind square bishop, but uh, thought to be about even. Okay, so c4 looks maybe a little bit awkward. Knight g f6, d3. The thing is with white's pawns here, is there kind of Achilles hill on d4 later, or the dark squares generally? That's one of the concerns. e6, so not actually going for a thin chateau, but actually e6. Uh, we have here knight c3, bishop e7. Both sides castle, bishop a4, a6, h3, rook b8, queen e2, b6, so preparing to Vincenzo here, bishop f4, bishop b7, we have rook a e1, as so though the e5 break is poised. Uh, now, you might wonder, well, what about e5 here? Tactically, there's a forcing move, bishop takes f3, knight takes e5, this position should be very nice for black, even if black gives up the e5 pawn here, it's the d4 square which is really good. And in fact, there's a key maneuver here, knight d6 to get into f5 to d4, which makes things quite unpleasant. Black's got a big advantage there, that'd be quite unpleasant for white. That key maneuver is echoed in some of the variations here, if white ever plays e5. So rook a e1, rook c8 is played, Bishop g3. And again, let's have a look at e5 here, because it looks to be you know a concern. Um, again here, taking knight takes this position. There's again this knight e8 to d6 to f5 to d4 maneuver. You know, trying to exploit that sensitive central square. This position, uh, if white has to play g4 to stop knight f5. Uh, for example here, this is just really comfortable for black with a big advantage. As soon as that happens, it's like a big advantage. So imagine g4. Uh, here, uh, bishop f6, black has a small edge here. It's the d4 square, which is uh, a real concern for white behind the scenes here. So bishop g3, now really clever positional play starts here. Knight b8, <laughs> rerouting the knight. Knight d2. Uh, you might consider e5 yet again here, knight h5, d takes e5, this position should be okay for black. Uh, okay, so knight d2, bishop c6 challenging the bishop a4, that goes back to b3, bishop just drops back, and then we have another committal move from white f, but it's a bit scary, as though there's some sort of kingside attack brewing. Knight c6, knight f3, now knight h5 pushing the bishop, uh, to h2. You might think, what about knight d4 here? Let's have a quick look at this. This would have been, I believe, potentially a small edge, but very difficult to sort of make progress here. So this is this is more flexible, not committing to knight d4. Because once a pawn is on d4 instead of a piece, then it sometimes can get tricky. So bishop h2 in principle. Bishop f, oh, sorry, knight goes back. Now e5 here. 
Now, this is a little bit scary. Knight e8 was played. You might think it's safe enough to take here. But if we have a look at this, the problem here is knight e4 to d6 potentially. These lines with knight d6 uh, can be kind of unpleasant. This is just an example. It can start to be quite unpleasant. It should at least be even for white. This pawn on d6 doesn't look... It's, it looks a bit nasty for black in some respects. So anyway, knight e8. And, you know, we have that classic idea of knight uh, to f5 to d4 potentially on taking. White plays knight e4. And now uh, g6 was played. Yeah, I mean, let's let's put this on the board as well. E, e takes here for knight f5 is again really strong idea. And here black would have a big advantage. Knight can actually use e3 in this particular scenario with a big edge. So yeah, knight e4 was played. g6. So that looks against f5, but also it does support knight g7, potentially. Queen d1. Now this is really, really clever positional maneuver from black. I wouldn't, you know, it's kind of subtle stuff, but it's not just d4, which is vulnerable, it's the d3 pawn potentially, and the d file, basically. And this next move addresses you know potential defile prospects. Actually, I wonder if you can guess at a nice little positional move. If I give you five seconds. <laughs> yeah, just rook c7. Yeah, it's going to d7. Yeah, so queen d2, rook d7, and all of a sudden, you know, the defile is a concern for white. Rook d1, d takes, f takes now. Uh, now we have knight d4. Now you notice that a piece lands on d4, not a pawn here, and there's an immediate threat of bishop takes e4. We have queen e2. And Lither actually uh, just takes that knight, you know, doubling white's pawns here. So this this could be potentially vulnerable this e5 in end games. Uh, this could be a potentially bad bishop against knight one day. In some distant end games already, you could see that possibility here. It might be an issue. This this light square bishop because there's pawns on light squares here. Uh, we see in this position, bishop g5, king h1. On uh, taking, you might think that's an idea. Check this position. F5 is actually a strong move here. For example, this rook takes this position is actually kind of favorable to black as an example. Uh, just an example continuation for you. Just to give you a gist, yeah, black could end up being better like that as an example. Uh, so it might not be in white's favor to take on d4. So uh, we have king h1. Now knight g7, bishop c2. h5, as though h4 to kind of grip lock down pawns on light squares. White plays g4, and this looks a bit odd to play g4 here. Sort of potentially anti-positional. If we see why was that really needed, if a3, this is an example, which uh, just to get an, an idea of what might happen if white wasn't doing anything. So just, I'm just giving white a few token moves. Black could build up on the dark squares like this. And if, if this position is reached, then there's potential for bishop f4. So this bishop would be silly compared to black's dark square complain, campaign. If queen f3 is needed, then losing e5, black's better. And otherwise, you know, this, this kind of scenario uh, is, is dangerous because of bishop f4. You, know, you, can, you can see that this is a really dangerous opposite color bishop scenario where black's just going to be uh, doing very well. This is just a fictional scenario. So there are a lot of dangers for allowing actually in this position h4. So we have uh, g4, but now uh, h4 anyway. Rook takes, queen takes. This bishop is still a bit of a concern, a long term downside, uh, which is an expression I've used before. Is it is a bit of a downside. Bishop a4 protects b2. Uh, giving up b2 is not too much compensation here yeah this is just going to be uh 
better for, for black, this kind of scenario. This hits e5 elegantly from a1. Black has a big edge there. So bishop a4 protects b2 rather simply. Queen, now this is really fascinating. Queen d8. A really nice backward maneuver. Uh, this is just asking for big trouble because of rook d1. Where actually, oops, black is in big trouble having to go into a south pen. You can imagine this is a disaster area. So getting out of any potential self pin in style to actually come and pin actually now this pawn on e4. We have king g2, uh, rook b8, uh, now rook d7. This looks a bit scary at first, the rook infiltration. But b5, yeah, the queen's also active on the a-file here. c takes, a takes. Queen f3, threatening a mate in two with taking and g7. So rook f8, you know, just to put that on the board for you, check and mate. So rook f8 is played. Bishop takes, queen takes a2, queen f2. And now uh, c4, black's trying to dissolve uh, the c pawn here. So rook c7. Now tactically, yeah, queen a5 when it's under pressure, and now trying to dissolve the c pawn. Bishop d3. Queen yeah, hitting the bishop though first before dissolving the c pawn. Now this is in black's interest to do this because now e5 can be a liability potentially. Queen d4. Rook b3. Queen a1. Now this does support the idea of rook a8 to a2 potentially. This bishop's you know a bit passive, so is this one actually. Black's piece is well the knight's not spectacular though on g7. So there's some work to do here. Rook a8, rook b1. We have queen c3 hitting the bishop. Bishop moves. Bishop e3. And now not having the queen exchange here. G5. We have queen c4. Queen a7 again, not interested in the queen exchange. Now, uh, with the queen hitting g5 here, we have the move king h7. You might be wondering why. Well, there's a tactical reason. This can't be taken uh, because of the check winning the rook. So, for example, this continuation, there's no, there's nothing for white to do there. So, this this check is is dangerous. Sorry, this this <laughs> this position. Okay, there's queen a2 check. So we have bishop e2 actually being played, and now king g6. You might find this a little bit surprising, but there's no way to um, exploit the king here. Uh, it seems uh, no completely easy way. Uh, I think actually in this position. Well, let's let's see what happened. Queen Queen D one. Knight E eight. Yeah, that's ready to cover F six. I was just looking at F six for a moment there. Rook B five. Rook C eight. Queen C two. Rook C seven. Queen B three. Rook D seven. Yeah, some positional maneuvering going on here. Bishop B six. Queen B four. Harassing this bishop. Bishop F two. And bishop goes back. Again, harassing the bishop. Rook a5, queen c7. Uh, we have rook d8. Again, now not minding the exchange of queens here with rook b8 here. Queen takes, knight takes, rook c2. So this end game, whose favour is it in? Now here, this is a really interesting move. <laughs> Just the knight going to a8 here, trying to sidestep you know the restrictive possibilities of the bishop just potentially going on a, on a dark square now if you look at this position that light square bishop's covering light squares so the, the knight switches to the most aggressive dark square it can get in this position which happens to be <laughs> b6 because if it went back here there's no there's no prospects so b6 is the prospect square very interesting uh rook a2 if we look at this position with bishop g1 for a moment you can see actually that uh, white could get in trouble here because that gives rise to knight d7 for example 
to hit e5. Nice end, ending for white, um, for black with a big advantage. So we see rook a2 here, knight b6, king f3, and again bishop c5. Here. So hatting, hitting the bishop, harassing the bishop. Uh, we have knight d7, so e5 is starting to look a bit vulnerable. You know, black has another move, then there's bishop d4, rook d2, knight f8 now. Rook c2, bishop e3, wanting to swap off the dark square bishop will weaken e5. So this is avoided for a moment. Bishop c4, rook a3. But now the king uh, is is concerned and steps back, allowing bishop f4. So this knight versus bishop scenario is coming up. Rook a2. Yeah, if we look at this position where bishop takes... This doesn't really help matters. That's going to have a big edge there after winning that pawn. So rook a2. The rooks come off. Yes, we're end, we're going to a, a much simpler end game now, where black is just winning that centre pawn. So this is looking very very nice for Lila here, and the dark squares are just so weak. The knight's kind of dominating the bishop. In this end game, the king's coming in, so winning another pawn now, two pawns up. The game actually ended here, so at move eighty-eight, it could have continued f five, for example. Uh, it's it stopped when there's a plus six point five difference on both evaluations for four moves, I believe. That's the TCEC rule, by the way, uh, for ending a game. So it was like yeah, massive advantage to black now um, both engines kind of agreed so this is just an example continuation where if this position is reached for example black could play for g4 and crash through with the two connected past pawns basically for example like that uh, or if king f1 uh, say knight takes g4 check g2 is, is going to be winning so very very nice game with black there by Leela. Fantastic game. Uh, so at this point in the tournament, after round four, Leela was on three and a half out of four. So quite a stunning performance at this round four point. So a real change from the Leela ID one two five from the previous year, which couldn't win basically a single game. So fantastic progress. Congrats again to the Leela team on this magnificent game achievements here in round four. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.